Welcome to Pageant Planet's podcast, where we share stories and strategies to help expand and connect the global pageant community. Visit pageantplanet.com to find pageants, hire coaches, shop for dresses, and more. Now, here's your host, Stephen Roddy. Welcome, everyone, to another Pageant Planet podcast, where our goal is to connect and expand the pageant industry by sharing the life and accomplishments of people in the industry. We hope the story of Lorraine Chuck inspires you. Jesse, set the stage for us. Stephen, this week we are taking a look at the life of Lorraine Shuck, a beauty queen and a businesswoman. She was born and raised in the Philippines, currently living in Pasig City, a highly urbanized city in Metro Manila. And for any woman who was born in the Philippines or follows pageantry and knows this, there is no doubt that at one point in their life, they may enter into the pageant world. Lorraine Shuck is one of these women. That's right. In fact, holding a national title in the Philippines has got to be one of the most admirable achievements for a Filipino woman, especially knowing how well prepared these women seem to be at the international pageant level. Lorraine is one of these successful title holders who uses her past successes and experiences to train and develop pageant girls and pageant systems in today's decade. As it is once said that with great power comes great responsibility, and the same goes for Lorraine, who has had her profession, her pageant, and her integrity questioned in recent years. It's no easy task running a national and an international pageant, but first, we will dive into Lorraine and how she got her start and where she is today. Lorraine's pageant career dates back to over 40 years ago. Lorraine won the title of Moot. Mutaying Filipinas 1979 and Mutaying Filipinas began over 51 years ago in 1968 and as title holders have gone on to win 15 of the largest international pageant titles in the world. The pageant is best known for promoting tourism in Asia, social responsibility, fashion and beauty pageants. And Lorraine was chosen to compete at the International Miss Asia Quest 1979 pageant, which was held in Manila. And 15 countries competed for the title, but Alia Atlas from Turkey was the one who ultimately took home that title. Yeah. Lorraine represented the Philippines and made her country proud by placing as second runner-up to Elia Atlas from Turkey and first runner-up to Marine Les Torjan from India and Lestorjan was unable to fulfill the duties and Shuck was then moved into the position as the first runner up. If the Miss Asia, Miss Asia Quest pageant is unfamiliar to you listening, it's because the pageant has since rebranded itself um, over the past three years in 2016, and it's now called the Miss Asia Pacific International Pageant. So you might be more familiar with that if you're fairly new to the industry. Yeah, which is still a very large pageant to date. Mm-hmm. So L- Lorraine has since, after her stout as a contestant, become the vice uh, executive vice president of the organization named Carousel Productions Inc., which owns the Miss Earth and Miss Earth Philippine pageant. And Shuck is the executive vice president to co founder next to president slash business person Raymond Monzon. The organization is based in Manila, Philippines. And I want to pause for a quick coaching moment here because if you ever feel like your passion for competing has started to dwindle down, but you love the industry still, I would say like, try your luck at directing a pageant. I know people that are directing and still competing at the same time. They don't compete in their own system, of course, but it's just like they have a passion for serving others so much and they love the industry that they just can't imagine without it. So your knowledge and experiences can be used to inspire other pageant girls to compete and succeed too, um, pageant girls and boys. And the organization um, that she has like really enabled her to carry on that passion into that other side of the industry. Stephen, do you like most of the successful, most successful directors I know were pageant contestants at one point. What about you? Yeah. I mean, same. And I mean, I can think of a few like, uh, you know, Steve Mays and uh, Kathleen Mays. Like we talk about them a lot. The owners of national American Miss, they never competed. They came from a business background. Um, but I can even say like with myself, I did not. So I never competed in a pageant. Um, I competed in a fitness competition in an effort to like try to experience what it is that contestants go through so I could have a better understanding. I hated it. Didn't like it. Yeah. It didn't mm-hmm. like being on stage. Didn't like the prep, didn't, but I love working in helping other people achieve their goals in this niche. Um, so if it's one of those things, I mean, to your point that you like the industry, you're just not really crazy about competing. There are a ton of opportunities to get involved as a director to make 
really a huge impact in the lives of other people and to make some money in the process. For sure. And so based on the organization that Lorraine founded, it's founded upon environmental causes and promotes safety of the earth and its people, plants, and resources. So pause here to go back to that coaching session for one second is you can make a pageant that's your passion. You don't have to follow in line with anybody else. Like I don't think anyone at this time was really focused on this niche. So clearly she was able to find a way to bring her passion into pageantry too. So that's a really cool thing about directing as well. And not only is that organization well known for its involvement in the pageant industry, but also numerous efforts to spread awareness of those environmental issues going on worldwide, along with the ways we can protect the earth. And in 2004, Carousel Productions founded the Miss Earth Foundation, a nonprofit environmental social humanitarian organization. And uh, Stephen, why don't you share what their about section reads on the website? Sure. The Miss Earth Foundation has a vision of a better planet, one with less pollution, less crime, less disease. We believe this is possible. If we raise funds to support research and efforts dedicated to these causes, we have a list of partner foundations that is always growing and changing that we raise funds for. We do all different types of fundraisers, but our goal is to use companies and organizations that always have a greater purpose. We believe people have the means to change the world. They simply need an outlet to raise and organize the support. And the organization has many projects to help promote environmental safety in the community. Some include their I Love Planet Earth school tour, their I Will Heal the Earth pledge, along with corporate sponsorships and fundraising tips for large events. And Shuck is also prided on the numerous environmental awards the foundation has received. And we'll read a couple now. First is the Lauren Lagarda Environment Award, which and is an award for the movie Project Noel, which is an environmental advocacy film produced by Carousel Productions. That's the first one. What's the other one, Stephen? It's Environmental Heroism Award, and this is also uh, Carousel Productions was committed for helping in efforts to strengthen environmental awareness among Filipinos and fostering environmental preservation and care for Mother Earth. And the Miss Earth Foundation is also well known for its ties and involvement with United Nations Environmental Program as event host for award ceremonies and in the United States Climate Change Conference, which you rarely see a pageant cross over to this area of the world. So kudos to Lorraine and Carousel for making that happen. Yeah, and that, this is one of the things like I really love about the Miss Earth organization is that in okay this is not a sponsored co- podcast or anything like that but it's such a targeted brand you know as far as we are here to promote better um as they said like better water better air better like for to care for mother earth it's such a targeted niche that it's really easy to get behind especially now because i feel like holistically throughout the world people are more hyper focused of the environment. So mm-hmm. which is why I feel like this particular pageant will continue to grow and expand in like really recent years. And I, I feel like it's going to, how do I say it? In the near future, I feel like their numbers are going to continue to climb like pretty drastically because of this targeted approach. Agree. Yeah. So um, Jesse already alluded to this, but originally the creation of Kirasol Productions was to organize the Miss Asia Pacific International Pageant. However, it left this system and wanted to replace it with another international pageant. And in 2001, the Miss Earth Pageant was born. And in the Philippines, many people aspire to be beauty queens. As we know, they are total celebrities in that area of the world. And this is probably why Carousel Productions Incorporated believed in an environmental-based pageant would be beneficial for the contestants, winners, and for advocating for the protection and preservation of the earth. Because if you post post a um, flyer for a pageant in the Philippines, you know girls are showing up. <laughs> Well, and this is just one of those where they capitalize on a trend that was ahead of its time. It took the world Mm -hmm. a little bit of time to catch up, but this is what we see um, girls doing in the pageant industry. When you adopt causes, you're bringing things to people's awareness, and then over time, like the world starts to change its mind. And I feel like the the not-so-silent voice behind these uh, movements start in pageantry with title holders like you adapting a platform, adapting a cause, passionately speaking about it on national television, your local TV, interviews, schools, and on the, on the pageant stage. And all those can, 
creates a shockwave that you really don't understand fully that you're contributing to because the the real effect of that might not be felt for a decade down the road. But with you and with a hundred and then a thousand other pageant girls all across the world speaking and adopting the same platform message and bringing awareness to it, you are creating change. So mm-hmm. you know, let that help you take heart. Yeah. Um, okay. So the winners of the Miss Earth go on to serve as ambassadors to environmental causes and campaigns around the world. The winner is also active with the Miss Earth Foundation and the United Nations Environment Program. The Miss Earth pageant's motto is beauty for a cause, not to be confused with Miss World's Beauty with a Purpose Program, which ironically started around the same year. Yeah, I saw I saw this in um, Maria's outline, and we'll talk about Maria in a, in a bit, but I couldn't, I was like, wait a minute, that sounds eerily similar to beauty with a purpose. So I, I went ahead and I did some sleuthing to find out like, okay, was there like a situation where one piggybacked off the other? And I was shocked when I saw that they were the same year. So I don't know if it was just like a, a time to do, do good things in the industry, but do you have any insight on that, Steven? I, I honestly, I don't, um, I would say, gosh, I, I was going to say a hypothesis, a conjecture is either a, one of them was, you know, closely following the other, which in this case, it would make sense that Lorraine was following more like Miss World and what they rolled out um, and maybe got inspiration for that. Or it could have been just a random coincidence that the names are so closely related that, um, yeah, maybe the crossover was there. But I, I really don't have any concrete facts yeah, around same. that. Yeah, that's well, cool, though. All, yeah, all good things regardless. So Lorraine shared to her world Vietnam, which is an, a publication. She said, I love nature. I love being raised in an environment filled with trees, clean water. The sky is blue and the air is fresh. And because of the love for nature, reading and watching the news of human disasters has driven us to create a program that brings awareness to the environment. And known beauty, cont- beauty contests are incredibly popular. So we decided to launch the Miss Earth Beauties for a Cause year 2001 again which is the same time that beauty with a purpose was founded too yeah and the pageant is now known for being held for one month long um competition in manila which again ironically miss world is for one month too so there could definitely be some uh crossover there um so let me just start over again. So Badge is known for being a one month long competition held in Manila, <laughs> Philippines with judging components, including resort wear, talent, um, swimwear, eco tour, video, evening gown and interview. And again, like if you look at this, so minus the swimwear, which Miss World dropped a few years ago, these are all very similar, like talent. Miss World has talent. Um, Miss Earth has talent. It's held for a month. Miss Earth is held for a month. There's beauty for the cause, beauty for the purpose. So I I would say that since Lorraine started the pageant after Miss World, I would ha- I would have to think because of all these similarities that there could definitely be some like she was looking at Miss yeah looking at Miss World. Um, so in 2017, Lorraine was recognized at the first Filipino pageant ball and received an award for her involvement in succession with the Miss Earth organization. Under her leadership, Miss Philippines Earth and Miss Earth have stayed true to being the most socially relevant pageant in the country and the world. And while Lorraine's involvement with the Miss Earth pageant has had a phenomenal reputation over the last 18 years, it has not come without its scandals and controversies. And in 2012, Uh, Lorraine was rumored to have a conversation with one of the representatives of the Russian oligarch, a very wealthy Russian business person, um, agreeing to sell the Miss Earth crown for $4 million. Yeah, I remember seeing that like years ago. And Shuck's statements um, all denied these rumors um, as she is a very intelligent businesswoman that would not jeopardize her or the pageant reputation for any amount of money. The pageant continued its positive streak of crowning winners year after year until 2018. What should have gone on as another smooth pageant turned into one of the biggest scandals in Miss Earth and in pageant history. So coaching moment here, contestants and, you know, parents, you tend to put a lot of pressure on directors to be like perfect, timely, organized and ethical in every possible way. And while all these characteristics are what every successful director should possess, Give your director some grace if they fall short from time to time, with the exception of in the ethical. You know, if something Mm -hmm. crosses the line ethical, 
you know, remove yourself away from them as fast as humanly possible. But if something falls short or it's like not organized, like just keep in mind that there's a huge responsibility on the directors mm-hmm. of the pageant, especially at the international level. I mean, you're dealing with customs and getting girls, uh, helping girls get visas and different language barriers, all that. So, um, and the, really the only one that would truly understand all the amounts of pressure are the director's or you when you're in that position of being an international director. So it's yeah. important to realize that these directors are doing the best for the safety um, and well-being and enjoyment of just all their contestants. Yeah. And I mean, so, most times directors can't control anything on the outside. And I mean, you've met one, you've met them all and they're disgruntled pageant contestants or family members that feel like their person was robbed or it wasn't to their liking or satisfaction, the results so that they start, this rumor mill and um sometimes there's facts sometimes there's not and it's it's a it's a big bummer for directors because they put so much of their energy into it so yeah. keep that in mind so here here's a fun I, I was like oh my gosh i never thought about this but um i was talking with someone who will remain nameless about some uh organizations that will remain la- nameless but they're the internet they're an international organization so um and well so the international organization was here, the, the international pageant was here in America. And when the contestants came over from certain countries, some of them just didn't go home because like it's a much better life here. So they got an opportunity to stay or, or come and then they just never got back on their flight home. So then they kind of stayed as an illegal <laughs> until oh, wow. you had to skirt the system because like it was a way into America. Yeah, and that was like a very real thing, which they I mean the directors, they don't I mean, they're not responsible for getting the girls back on the plane, but yeah. that is that is a thing that can that can happen, which is why, you know, you need to follow the proper procedures and all that stuff, you know. But uh, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I never thought about that component until somebody was telling me that it was like a very real thing that's happened in the past. Yeah, I'd never would have even thought about that. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you come here as a particular title holder and you get booed up and all of a sudden you're legal. Wow. 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 <laughs> so, all right, back to the podcast. So back to the podcast. Um, I'm like speechless about that. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, which never, as you know me, never happens. Yeah. Um, so I'll just read the script. So, um, so several delegates came forward after the Miss Earth 2018 pageant. So all that controversy that came up stating that they were unsafe in the care of the Miss Earth organization and that they were sexually harassed by one of the sponsors and not even Lorraine Chuck could have prepared herself for the uproar that was about to occur in the pageant world. And, um, Miss Canada and Miss England were the two main delegates at the forefront of these statements. Yeah, and so Lorraine Schock and Carousel Productions, Inc. released several statements saying that they did everything they could to protect the contestants, address these claims, and remove any unsafe people and circumstances. And although this was a valiant effort at keeping the situation under control, the contestants felt as if the matter was not dealt with. And everyone knows the quickest way to spread a message around the world is through the means of social media. And once these two contestants put their experiences out on Instagram, it didn't take long before hundreds of pageant accounts and articles were covering the girls' stories. And this brings me to a coaching moment. If you are ever feeling unsafe, unwell, uncomfortable in a pageant, please make sure to tell any supervisor, director, and even the pageant CEO. And these items should not be swept under the rug until after the competition is over. Building trusting relationships with any pageant system is about open and honest communication. And not to mention your safety should absolutely be any director's number one priority. And I'll give, I've never been in the situation, but I will give an alternative um, example for how this comes into play. So uh, my experience at Miss International, you walk out of the interview room and the national director is there. And she says, were you asked any questions about your religion, about politics or anything that made you feel uncomfortable? and that's her way of saying, okay, say it now, like, and then after the pageant, you can't come back and complain that this happened type mm-hmm. thing, and I appreciated that because I felt, I, I, not that, that didn't happen for me, or I don't think anyone that we competed with, but I appreciated that she put herself out there to be like, hey, like, this is a rule that was broken, Yeah. Um, 
versus people waiting till the end. And then they come back and then she's blindsided that her judges didn't follow her lead. So, um, again, very, very different situation, but still like paramount importance of if this happens in the moment where you're not feeling safe, like this is the time to speak while you're there. And you know, if you're feeling safe, unsafe, do you really want to represent that pageant in the first place? So what do you have to lose by stepping up? Yeah. And I mean, Mary is, I mean, so full of integrity that, I mean, Mm -hmm. and there's, it shows that she really carries, and Mary's the uh, national director of uh, international. Um, But she shows her integrity by even having that safeguard in place, which most pageants don't. Um, There's two things too, that I would like to contribute to that. One from the contestants perspective, um, kind of the success of an organization is somewhat, how do I want to say this? Uh, the bigger an organization get, the more opportunity there is for air quote scandals, you know? So like, don't let that necessarily throw you off from either competing in an organization or whatever, like pageant planet has had its scandals, you know, air quotes. And most of the time, and I'm not saying all the time, but most of the time scandals are just when things are not fully understood by what's going on. So then the rumor mill starts and then that builds. It's like, oh, so people use like, oh, this A happened and B happened. So it must mean that C is is the reason behind it. So no no director is going to um, like intentionally sabotage their pageant, um, you know, by trying to skirt the rules. Now, do some skirt the rules? Yes. But like, we're just talking holistically here. So- Don't let scandals necessarily throw you off. Now, on the other side, for uh, directors and all that involved, if you don't communicate with your audience, if you don't communicate with your contestants, your staff, or your other directors, then you are giving them free reign to basically make up and connect the points themselves, and it's never favorable. So one of the things that we've done successfully as a brand when on um, pageant planet is when there is misunderstanding with our brand um i go like and i say this is the deal and it's usually like you hearing from me personally not some official vague um statement it's like no it's steven like ceo this is like how we make decisions this is what the process was um, so as long as I do that, then it almost always kills the flame because you're like, no, this is actually what happened. But I feel like these companies, especially the bigger they get, they lose that personal touch and they put like a generalized statement out there. That's just like so vague and undescriptive or anything like that. It just creates no powerful impact and it just ticks the people off even more. So just don't oh do that gosh, as a director. Oh my gosh, you're not kidding. Yep. Yeah. You don't want to take anybody off. No, and it's like more than they've already been ticked. And I feel like for the most part, if you come and yeah, there there's still some people's even like when I apologize, there's still people that continue to attack. Right. And that's just that's on them. Um and that's just some people are gonna respond that way. Um I can remember uh, there was there was a, a situation where a woman didn't get her check at the time that really Bank of America said that she was supposed to get her check. So it was like, it was on the post office, but then she said that we were trying to steal, I don't know, I think it was like $400 from her or something like that. And I was like, what? No, like why, why, what would I do with $400? Um, Like in the grand scheme of things, right? So it was just a misunderstanding. And then she reached out to the staff, the staff didn't give her adequate answer. Um, and then she went to like one of these boards and then there was like a whole uprising of like pageant plan is stealing her, this woman's $400, call the attorneys. And I just went there and I was like, Hey, so sorry for the misunderstanding. Here's a screenshot from bank of America that says estimated time of arrival is today. Like if you don't have it like in two days, like I'll wire you the money or whatever I said, cause it's been a little while ago and then it kind of died down. But then there was still one person in there. It was like you're arrogant and like you're <laughs> like attacking names is like, okay, like that, that I've done all I can do here. So I bounced, but then there was other people that was really grateful for it. So you're not going to get away from people attacking you by doing things like of integrity, by coming out and just trying to quench, quench it, quench it, squelch it, you know, put out the fire, <laughs> but it squash does. It? Yeah. Squash it. That's what I was like. But it will ultimately help like create, um, or stop the, the larger conversation. Yep. Okay. And we're back. All right. And we're back. 
Am I up or you up? Me? You're up. Oh, Do you I'm still it? talking. No, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and take it. So a scandal <laughs> that could have surely ended the shuck and uh, the pageant's reputation it seemed to be a minor consideration at the 2019 Miss Earth pageant and it still had 85 countries competing for the title. To this day, there is no doubt that shuck receives backlash about these um, kind of claims. However, she keeps her head high and remains true to her words. She is maintaining her professional status by keeping true to the fact that 19 years of running one of the most popular pageants in the world will not be dictated by a few scandals over the years. And in 2019, the pageant seems to go about as it has in the past. So no crazy issues there. And they crowned four new international title holders with Puerto Rico's Nellis Pimentel winning the Miss Earth 2019 title. And if you're interested in learning more about this system and its title holders, last week we actually covered the current Miss Earth heir, Amani Davis. So you can go back and listen there. But I want to say, because we've, we've mentioned the script twice today, and we usually are on the fifth wall where we don't tell people we have a script. But I want to give some insight that, like, if you listen to our early podcast, Stephen and I are ramblers, and yeah, true. we find this script so important to keep on task. And plus, we're talking about facts and stats and dates. So for those that are like, if you're clutching your pearls, annoyed that we have a script, like it's all for the best. I promise. Yeah, and we special shout out to Maria. She's on staff. She helps pull together all the facts and all the research, um, and yeah, it helps keep us on track. <laughs> helps keep us honest yeah yeah so um and mispronouncing things too i'm the worst at that i really am and i'm so sorry for everyone whose name <laughs> i've said <laughs> unless you're like a Susie smith um all right so Susie smith <laughs> <laughs> indeed indeed all right all right, all right. okay We're there, almost there and back to the script. So very notably, Lorraine was featured on the cover of Her World Vietnam's magazine in August of 2019 for their 10th anniversary. She stood alongside three Filipino beauty queens, Miss Earth 2005, Angela Ong, Miss Earth 2017, Karen Abasco, and Miss Earth 2014, Jamie Harrell. Um and living a life and having a career in the pageant industry comes with its ups and downs. And Lorraine Chuck has experienced these in really in many ways. And however, it takes a strong woman to overcome the odds and still remain on top. And if it wasn't for Shuck's many years in the industry, building a name and a brand for herself, she too may have just been a name of the past. And many pageant contestants choose to remain in the pageant world after they are done competing by means of judging coaching and emceeing and it takes a truly disciplined and intelligent woman to step in the position of a pageant director yeah it's essential to put passion and purpose into every facet of developing and building an international organization carousel productions inc miss earth miss earth philippines and miss earth foundation are still thriving because of this purpose to protect and the earth and its people and as always we love to end with the words of the subject so here is a quote that we loved um, of Lorraine Shuck, and she said, it is really quite tiring with all that traveling and pre-pageant activities, but we cannot step aside the organization's main focus, which is to educate and get the public involved in the global movement to save the planet. Mm. And if you would like to be featured, uh, a featured contestant, our director or coach on our next podcast, create a contestant, coach, or director profile with your information, cute stories, and hidden facts, along with what makes you special. Then email support at Pageant Planet with the title podcast feature so we can review your profile and then we'll let you know within 24 hours after you submit it if we are going to plan on scheduling you um, in the future so also a special shout out to maria maria Giorlando um, for doing the research as we mentioned earlier thanks for listening and if you've received any benefit from the show or from once previous please consider giving us a five-star review and also for jesse and i just say how much you love our rambling, please, just for our ego. We're sensitive. <laughs> it might seem like a small action, but it truly does. It helps us keep the, go the show going and helps more people um, to find out about it. So we appreciate it in advance. Thank you so much. Until next time. Want to become a part of pageant history? Create a free contestant or business profile on pageantplanet.com to unlock hidden features and connect with other experts throughout the world.